Hello and welcome to another free Vectric project of the month. My name is Michael Tyler and uh, presenting this uh, new project called the Soul Luna Box. It has a woodcut type engraving on the uh, sun side and a woodcut type engraving on the moon side, Soul Lunar, and also a nice decorative uh, V-carve cut on the front and back panels. The uh, lids are kind of unique. They use a single hinge point for each lid. They're offset from the corner, and so you just slide these open and slide them closed. You've got two sections there with a the divider. So it'll make a great gift uh, for somebody or just something you want to uh, keep for yourself. So as usual, you can download the free project files by logging into your VNCO account, and there'll be a step-by-step -step illustrated PDF instruction. Of course, this video will take you uh, through the steps step-by-step as well. So I uh, hope you enjoy this video, and uh, if you do decide to make one, for yourself, please post a picture of it on the Vectric forum and on your social media account so we can enjoy the uh, project um, that you do yourself. So just a, a note here, uh, when you're creating this project, there's a lot of very fine, not very deep engravings taking place here. So to be really successful at a project like this, where it's got the delicate engravings that are not very deep, you need to be sure to surface your small board flat and use a flat, uh, even thickness stock as well. And that will give you a, a good result uh, with the engravings, especially where the lighter lines are too. So I hope you enjoy this project, uh, enjoy the rest of the video. And if you enjoy it, please give us a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe so you don't miss any of the future projects. All right, on with the video, I hope you enjoy it. Okay, I've got all the parts separated and I just need to remove the tabs. So I've got some uh, 60 grit paper and I just use it very lightly to remove the, the tabs on the flats like that. Get the bulk of it off and then I'll follow it up with a block of uh, 220. I'll show you that here.
that gets rid of the tabs pretty quickly. So I'll go through all the um, parts and remove the tabs that way. Uh, and then also I just want to make a note, these engravings on the parts are really shallow so you don't want to sand this surface too much. Actually what I did, I pre-sanded uh, the boards before I uh, actually did the uh, CNC machining on them. So I had a pretty good, uh, nice, flat, smooth surface to begin with. So all I'm doing is just barely touching it up a little bit with some 220 grit. And I don't want to sand too deep or it's going to erase some of that engraving, particularly on these lids. It's a very, very shallow, almost a uh, sort of a woodcut uh, type of... Uh, effect and so I don't want to sand too much I just want to get any stray fuzzies off of there and I'll also use a stiff toothbrush just to kind of get in there and, and uh, get out any stray fuzzies that might be inside that engraving so all right uh, I'll continue on I just want you to uh, get a heads up about not sanding too much on these engraved uh, surfaces Okay, we're ready to put the box together. It's all butt joint construction. I'm going to start with uh, creating the bottom assembly and side assembly first. So I've gone ahead and put some glue on a paper plate here and just dabbing that in in this uh, dado slot. Okay, I'll place that in. It's a perfect fit too pleased with that. And I'll glue on the two sides. Okay, I've had this uh, clamp for about 45 minutes or so and I'm going to remove the clamps and glue on the side, or excuse me, the front and back panel, uh, front and uh, back decorative panels. So right now, you see this is uh, built upside down in relation to the uh, front and back panels. So there's a couple ways to glue these on. One is, is you could use a scrap piece of lumber, this is three quarter inch, and set this on top of there and then glue on the front, front and back panels like this. And that, uh, that should work out pretty well. Or, to make sure that these edges here and these edges here are all uh, flat to each other, you can actually turn this whole assembly upside down on this flat surface instead, and then glue these on upside down. That way, you're absolutely sure that the tops of all this construction is uh, flat to each other. The only drawback to this, since it's upside down, you really can't see uh, how the, the joints are you know, on the top, the visible joints on the top. So it's up to you, you can do it either way. I'm gonna go ahead and glue these on upside down like this, and I'll let it sit for a while, and then I'll flip it over and take a look at those joints and see if I need to do any further clamping. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and glue these panels on. Okay, I've got the box all sanded up and uh, all the parts ready to go. And what I'm going to do now is position the lid parts on the top of the box and tape them in place uh, to get ready for the next step. So I'm just putting these lid pieces on, trying to make sure they're even with the edges. And there's a small clearance gap uh, between the curved parts of the lids and this decorative middle section. That's intentional. 
what I want to do is eyeball this and uh, look at the position of everything to get an even gap between these two lid pieces and also trying to make this back side even with the box itself. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that alignment. Okay, I'm gonna tape this in place, all these pieces in place, so they don't shift on me. Okay, the next step will be to uh, drill a pilot hole at the pivot points here. Now I could have had the pivot point in the corner and you could do that if you want to, but I've got these holes spaced evenly. So you could put the pivot point uh, right here or here, which is what I prefer. And the reason it's uh, the pivot point is here is because when this lid is opened, the uh, corner here is supported better by having the pivot point here. It's supported by the uh, back side of the box and the um, sides of the box. If I have the pivot point here in the corner, if you open it up uh, really wide, then um, this lid does not have as much support there. And um, I, I just think it's better to uh, have that pivot point here so that when, it, when the lid's open, slid open, uh, it'll have that uh, support there uh, for the lid on both sides. So my pivot point is gonna be the second hole from the uh, sides of the box. And then this center section will be glued in place. I put a couple more pieces of tape here and just uh, press it down very firmly because that's going to act like a hinge and I'll apply glue. I'm going to glue this in place uh, while these are still here so I can reposition this if necessary. I'm going to glue that center por portion in place and um, allow that to dry. So I'll just peel this up here. Now, of course, you want to be careful not to get any excess glue where it's going to glue those lid pieces in place. So I'm, I'm being uh, cautious here with the glue. And I'm keeping that well away from the uh, sliding, or the, yeah, the sliding lid portions there. Now the glue's dry, I'm ready to drill the pilot holes, and I'm going to drill uh, a pilot hole at each location for the pivot point. I'm using an 11 64 inch bit, and that's to accommodate these number eight uh, sheet metal round head screws. Okay, so I'm gonna do my best to drill straight down. Now if you have a drill press, of course you could use that instead. But I'm going to go down uh, through the lid, that's three quarters of an inch, and then uh, the screws are about an inch and a quarter uh, long. So I'm going to go down uh, about an inch and a half. I'm just going to eyeball it. You can always put a little piece of tape, a little flag there to give you that depth, but it's not important if I go a little farther. Okay, these are just a couple of... Uh, six penny finish nails. I'm just gonna put them in the pilot holes there and I'll remove the tape. Okay, I'm just gonna test that hinge action there. What I'm looking for is if this corner wants to hit the center section here, then I'm gonna sand that down a little bit, but it looks like, looks like it's gonna clear that all right. I'm in the process of applying uh, some light coats of uh, crystal clear gloss and uh, then I follow that up with uh, satin spray. So I'm going to start with the clear coats overall uh, inside and out. I've already done the bottom of the lids and the bottom of the box. So I'm just applying uh, over the, the uh, top and the inside of the box now. So I'll see what it looks like after I apply the clear coats, but I'm thinking I'm uh, going to apply a sort of a light brown uh, glaze to the overall uh, box and the lids just to accentuate those carvings. So see what it looks like see if the shadows uh, Accentuate the carvings the engravings enough or not if not then I'll help it out a little bit with the glaze 
Okay, I finished uh, applying all the clear coats. I'm just reinstalling the screw pivots. And as you can see, I went ahead and glued in the wooden knobs that I'm using. One thing I might do, I might put one of those little round uh, covered door pads right there, the self-stick pads, uh, just to uh, cushion that when it closes. And um, I went ahead and left it natural. I was really very well pleased with just applying the clear coat. I could see that this natural lighting uh, exposes the engraving a lot more than what I thought it would, but even without a glazing uh, technique applied over it. So I'm gonna live with this for a few days. I can always come back and change my mind and, and apply a glaze if I want to, but I'm pretty sure that uh, I'm just gonna leave it natural like this because the uh, engravings show up really, really well uh, with that just the natural finish. So um, I hope you enjoy this project. Make one for yourself or give it as a gift for friends and family and uh, maybe even sell it at uh, craft shows. So this is Michael Tyler. I hope you enjoyed the project and we'll see you next month with another free Vectric Project of the Month.